In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the data that you've collected from your survey and turn it into tables and charts that you can use to create a visual representation of people's answers to your questions, so of that data. So what it's going to look like is this right here. We're going to work on creating some tables like this. So these are tables that represent five of my questions. That's what I want you to select. Choose your five most interesting questions. And then I turned these tables into charts. You can see each of those here. Of my results, what I found was most interesting is um, in, from the data that I've collected so far, which is 23 respondents, 78.3% were born in California, so there's my yes answer, and 21.7% uh, were not. Uh, I thought that was high for not being born in California. Anyhow, uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to delete them for now so that we can recreate those here. So bear with me for a moment as I delete each of these. And they might not look exactly the same once I finish, but that's okay. I'm going to delete all of that information as well. So again, your job is to take any five of your questions and turn them into a table and then into a chart. And here's how you'll do that. One question that I thought was interesting is a favorite type of music. I'm just interested in music, so what I'm going to do is scroll way to the right over here and then just choose a spot to start. And over here, I'm going to title this Favorite Music or Fave Music. And then I'm going to title the second section and I'm going to bold that responses. So I've got this bolded and this bolded just so it looks different than my entries over here. And what I do over here is not going to affect these answers that people gave um, at all. So under this heading right here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exactly as they are on my spreadsheet and on my form, I'm going to list those right here. So I'm going to copy and paste. I could type them, but they need to be exactly correct or this won't work. So one of my choices was pop. So I'm going to scroll over here and I'm going to put in pop. Uh, then another response for favorite type of music was rock. copied that. Now I'm going to whoops, paste that over here. Then I'm also going to copy hip hop and paste that over here. And then I'm also going to take my fourth response, country, and copy that. So you need to copy each of your possible responses in this column right here. Whether you have two, whether you have ten, they all need to get copied exactly as they appear on your chart. That's why I copied and pasted. So now I'm going to put the number of people who responded with each of these favorite genres or types of music. And I could go over to this column and I could count how many people like pop the best, how many people like rock the best, country and hip hop, so on and so forth. But I don't want to do that because there's a much faster way. So I'm going to use a formula here. Here's another, I think, helpful way to use Google Spreadsheets. It's going to seem a little confusing at first, but I'll explain it and I think you'll get it. So I'm going to type in equals because I'm going to be entering a formula right here. And I'm going to use what's called the count if formula. Now that might seem a little bit confusing. There's a number of different count if formulas as you can see those things uh, appearing 
right down here. However, I'm going to type in count if, and then I'm going to put a parentheses. And this is the count if formula I want to use. I'm going to give it a range, and I'm going to give it a criterion. So in other words, I'm going to tell Google Spreadsheets to count a particular response if it's in a particular range and if it meets a specific criterion. So here's what that would look like. I can simply click on the range that I would like it to include. I could simply click and drag down section B to the bottom. But I know that more people are going to be taking this survey after I create this video. So what I would encourage each of you to do is just click on the column where that question appears. So it's going to count it if it appears in column B. That's what B colon B means. If it's anywhere in column B, it will count it. But we're going to give it another, well we're going to give it a criterion, so comma, and then I'm simply going to click on N5, because I'm telling it that I want it to count it if it's in column B and if it is exactly as I typed it in here, if it says pop. I'm going to close parentheses and I'm going to press enter, and I can see that nine people chose pop. Now, I could go to this cell right here and I could type in count if, and I could go through the same steps. However, it's quite a bit easier than that. All I have to do from here is use the fill handle and drag it down. And you can see, if I would click here, it counted if in column B, and then if rock was answered. And for this, if hip hop N7 was entered. And then for country as well. It's pretty handy. Now I'm just going to double check using the sum function because I know that 23 people took my survey so far. There we go. I just spot checked to make sure everything was okay. I'm going to delete this formula out of here because I don't want that to stay. So you're going to need to do that same thing for five different questions of your survey questions. I'll show you it on one more. So I'm going to do it for, uh, let's see, how about where do you live? So over here, I am going to type in where do you live? And then I need to copy the possible responses exactly as they appear on here. So I'm going to take Chino. Oops, quite right. There we go. I'm going to copy. So I would do this for each of the possible responses. So Chino was one. Ontario was another. And notice I don't have to do them in the same order that they appeared on my survey. I can really put these in any order I want right here. Then Chino Hills was a third. I'm copying them because they have to be on here. And I even noticed I misspelled Chino Hills. There's, I think, a capital I instead of lowercase i there. So I guess it's not a misspell, but it's definitely a typo. Oops. I'm going to need to copy that one again. So I just copied a blank cell. And then I had two more. Had Rancho. And I'm going to paste that. And then I think I had an other as a fifth category. So I'll copy that. Okay, so now I'm going to type in a header, a 
that says responses. And I noticed that two of these overlap, so there's that nice um, function of fit to data. If you go to resize column and fit to data and click OK, it made it as long as the longest entry. So my formula would be equals count if uh, in the parentheses. I don't remember what column it appeared in, so I'm going to go back and click it. It's column D, so I'm going to click up here. And I can see my formula cell follows me over here. I'll bring it back. There we go. Comma, and then I'm going to click right there because I want it to count how many times Chino appears in that column. I'm going to close parentheses and I'm going to press enter. And then I can, oops, copy that formula down and I can see my breakdown of what people answered. So off camera a moment, I'm going to pick three other questions to do the same thing with and then I'll come back to you when I've got those finished and I'll show you how to chart them. So as you can see on here, I have five questions charted. In our tabled, I should say, right here. And I chose two different ones. Uh, I chose to chart the answers to my coffee question right here. And I also chose to have people uh, to to table uh, how many people have siblings, actually similar to the California question. So what I want to do next is create some charts from, uh, from these tables. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a chart from my uh, favorite music question. And I'm going to highlight all of my table right here. And I'm going to go to insert chart. And as you can see, this has already created a chart for me, except I don't want this type of a chart. I want a pie chart. And look at that. I can see right away what percentage of people prefer which type of music. I like this chart because it already includes these as labels. Uh, it uses row four as headers, so that's nice. The only reason I want to customize it is because I want to include the question as the title. So include the title and now I clicked insert if you missed that and now I have this as my uh, as my chart. If I go up here near the arrow, uh, I get the I, I can grab the chart and move it around. Uh, except this is a pretty sizable chart, so I think the best way to store these is if we move it to its own sheet right there. And I'm just going to call this music. And you're going to do that same thing for each of your tables here. I'll show you one more. This time I'm going to create a bar graph. Except, uh, let's see, I don't want a bar graph, I want a column graph. Let's see, there we go. And you can see I have my labels on here already and Obviously, Chino leads the way so far. I would customize this simply with the question as the chart title. I go down here to click insert, and then I would move this chart to its own sheet. And I would probably just type in the question here. It's a short question. Where do you live? So you're going to do that for all five. And you can create a pie chart or a um, column chart. Or uh, you can do a bar, bar graph or a bar chart. 
as well. But you'll need five charts down here along the bottom, just like I started this video with. Please let me know if you have questions.